Hello! Today is another video about trying to improve the range, or at least the video signal at range, on my walk snail quad. I'm using this uh, big Chimera 7, and if you remember last time, what we did is we used different antennas on the goggles to try and improve the range. We had the Menis RC antennas, that seemed to do a lot better than the original walk snail. We also talked about moving the battery position from top to bottom to stop it blocking because this little antenna is tiny. So I thought this time what I wanted to do is look at maybe improving this. So what can we do? Well, I talked to my friends over at Rush FPV uh, and they were kind enough to send me over some left-hand polarized antennas. We've got a few variants here because this is a UFL connector on the Wox now, and they do do uh, an extended UFL connector on their original Cherry 1 antennas. And as you can see, just by having that approximately there, it will go a lot further. It would be nice to get it stuck upwards a little bit more. That is the best option we've got to directly connect UFL. The other alternative is we get a UFL to SMA connector and then use regular SMAs. And with that, we've got two of the Cherry 2 antennas. We've got the, sort of the regular and the extended. And if we look at the extended, if we manage to come out there, we've got a huge uh, antenna then. And that, that's pretty much more what the original analog version came with. It was like a big antenna. And if we get that there, we should be able to go over the battery without a problem. This is not something I can quickly change at the field because this involves getting into the walks now, taking the VTX slightly apart in order to fit the new UFL antenna and then bringing it back again and getting an adapter and fitting it that way. UFL to SMA adapters aren't that common it seems. Uh, they, they do exist, you can get them on eBay, there's a few FPV stores that do them, but it seems like MMCX to SMA, very popular, get those everywhere, but uh, yeah, UFL to SMA, not so much. I have to say, I really hate UFL connectors. They're very, very fragile. I hate every time I have to do it. If you look at the specs for them, they're not designed to be taken apart and put back on at all. And so they are liable to break quite quickly. So I don't want to do this many times. So I envisage me fitting this one, testing it, fitting the adapter, and then it's easy to try with different uh, SMA antennas. Just before we get started with flying, we should mention the sponsor of our video today, which is PCBWay. If you're into your PCB design, you'll already know about PCBWay. They can make PCB circuits, they can manufacture them for you, as well as doing all sorts of exotic 3D printing you might not be able to do at home, like things in metal, uh, cutting carbon fiber, CNC milling things as well. But if you don't know about electronics, but kind of think, oh, that'd be fun to dabble with, how do I get stuff made? then take a look at their shared projects where people have submitted things in competitions or to share designs. There's stuff like an open source N64 flash cartridge and what you could basically do is have PCB way, make up that PCB, solder all the components on and make it up yourself. And there's even things that more for us FPV people, like there's several FPV planes on there, there's open source quadcopter designs using different types of boards for flight controls and things. So there's stuff to have a look at. Anyway, thanks to PCB Way, and there'll be a link down below where you can check them out. Welcome, a pretty nice, but a slightly windy day today. I'm in a slightly different position. If you can see over there in the background, you can see um, the grass is being cut into what's called silage and then wrapped up in bags for cattle feed later. So I'd normally be flying from just over there, but I didn't want to trample over this. So the difference is only about 50 meters. It's really long grass. You don't want to go down in there. Um, so I'm just keeping out of the way of that. So we have got the first of the Rush FPV antennas. This is the one that fits directly to the UFL connector. Not a perfect fit because of some problems. I'll show you that. We've got a slight problem that the UFL connector on the Rush FPV has this locking thing, which doesn't really fit into the walk style VTX very well and when you put the thing back on it had to go upside down in order for it to keep out of the way so that's not perfect there but uh, we're going to see how the picture looks we've got the battery on top configuration then we're trying to fly battery underneath as well see what the difference makes still going out about the same distance and uh yeah let's see what happens okay so we're up in the air and flying towards our destination and instantly I could hear this little oscillation noise. I thought, oh no, that was actually there last time. And I meant to look at it, but I'd forgotten about it and I was just carrying on. I kind of thought, mm, should I land and check it out? But I did remember that I was flying around with it without a problem last time. So I was gonna just take the risk. I think it's all kind of recoverable here if I have a problem to an extent. So I thought, you know, let's, let's take the slight risk and go ahead and fly it. 
I was trying to remember what the walk snail antenna looked like uh, going out like this. I tend to remember there was just a little bit of focus mode, um, but not as much as like when we had the 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 bad goggle antennas or the walk snail goggle antennas, I should say, which is just much worse than the menace ones. So we're heading out here and we're trying to get to the end, which I think gives about 1.2 kilometers. Um, a little bit higher than I intend to be. I try and fly these all the same, but we do get some sort of fluctuations in terms of height and speed and what the wind's doing. And you can see there's a slight wobble in the lens. Uh, this is caused somewhat by the wind and I'm thinking somewhat by the oscillation because I could kind of uh, hear it and, and see what the lens is doing at the same time. Uh, we did the turn there. We've got no focus mode. The signal has the max strength of four and it sort of went to three somewhere on the way out and it stayed at three and it hasn't dropped down which i think is better than it was i can't remember which is why we'll have to compare as far as this quad goes um i then flew it around basically for sort of nine ish minutes just getting the battery down making sure it felt okay just so i could check the quad out and uh, everything seemed all right well, that did really well, and I was going to now put the battery underneath, but I'm a bit nervous of doing so. I'm still getting that little uh, oscillation noise I can hear. I couldn't hear it that much when I was just hovering in front of me, but... I can see it in the picture, it's wobbling, and I still haven't sorted that, I kind of forgot. So I didn't want to fly it again until I got that sorted, make an effort. I just checked all the motors, everything feels fine, but it might, it might just be a prop got a little out of whack or something so I should have a proper look and uh, maybe swap some stuff over and see what we got but yeah that I think was a big improvement on last time with the battery on top I'll compare with the video to the, to the point that you know it's like do I, I don't really need to fly underneath at the moment because it's not going to improve much might improve the signal but um, certainly the the experience I had was much more like what I'd expect from analog, you could just fly around and not have a particular problem. Still a bit dodgy going behind myself, going down behind those trees and stuff. Got some of the focus mode in, but other than that, it was pretty good. So we'll have to now put the uh, adapter on and get the even taller uh, antenna. But this one is working pretty damn good if you want a sort of less fuss uh, UFL type connector. So if we put the footage for both antennas side by side, and I've tried to sync this up as best as possible with the turn, what you will see is there's still similar signals going out. On the turn, we get a little bit of focus mode where the Walks Now original VTX just drops to signal level of two, then recovers. But as we come along, the signal drops again on the Walks Now side, just bringing focus mode in a little bit and a little bit more as we go on and then recovers to free and it's normal so certainly better having the higher antenna poking a bit over the battery okay so this gave us a improvement over the normal vtx antenna we get from walks now that's pretty much based on the size of it i don't know if it's any better in its quality although i know that the rush fpv cherry antennas are very good but just the fact that the other one is so sure it only comes to here is gives it a bit of a problem and you might be thinking well why don't you just put the battery at the bottom all the time and that solves the problem all the time with this type of quad what you can actually do is have two of those batteries one on top one underneath and then have a parallel cable to have sort of 8000 milliamp hours of power that's kind of what this thing is is set up to do if you want to and in that case you'd always want something big to point over the top so I did want something that I fix all the time so I won't be able to fly the next uh, SMA um, antennas in this video mostly because I'm waiting for the uh, UFL to SMA adapters to arrive and when that does I'll be making up uh, little TPU bits to, to work out how to fix the SMA on there and, and put the big antennas on and then I can check that out again and see if we get any more improvements from that. Um, until next time I hope that's been helpful and I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.